Hello. Hello to all the parents, teachers, and friends of Tactile Images. Thank you all for your collaboration and for the fact that you are by our side. We believe that together we can create a better future for the blind and visually impaired children in the world. My name is Gabriel Victor and I am the project manager of the Urban Development Association. And today, with the help of our sponsor, the Orange Foundation of Romania, we will present to you the image creator drawing software. I have by my side my colleagues, Paola, Maria and Dan, whom I want to invite to tell us a few words. Paola. Hello, I'm Paola. I am the communication specialist of the Urban Development Association and I write emails to donors, press releases, presentations and many other materials. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm the illustrator and I'm in charge of drawing pretty much anything and creating the tactile images. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm the founder of Tactile Images and the Urban Development Organization. Thank you very much. The subject of our presentation, Image Creator, is a drawing software that facilitates teaching activities for teachers and home activities for parents. It's a software where you can draw tactile graphics, but it's also an instrument through which you can transform the tactile graphics you created into interactive one. Let's see now the content of this webinar. In the first part, we will present the tactile images website, the main services and apps available. Then we will make a general presentation of the image creator software, its main components and modules. After that, we will present the drawing module where we can create the tactile graphics. Another thing that we will present today is the maps module, the place where you can easily create a tactile map of your location or place that you want to visit. Then we will present the editor module, the place where we create the interactivity of the tactile graphics. At the end, we will talk about the following webinars that we will gonna uh, held. Let's start the presentation of this webinar. I will give the word to my colleague Paola to show you and describe the main functionalities of the Tactile Images e-learning platform. Paola. Okay, so let's see. Let's write www.tactileimages.org and it's loading. And this is our e-learning platform. Here you can see on the first page, a demo of two different ways of studying tactile graphics. The first one is the traditional way of studying with the help of another person, with the help of an adult that guides the hand of the child on the graphic while explaining what he is touching. And the second way of exploring is the modern one with the help of a mobile app, a mobile app that actually a mobile app that identifies the position of the finger on the drawing and describes audio what the child is touching. Now let's see the services that you will benefit from on this platform. At first we have a library, a library of 1000 drawings with descriptions in both English and Romanian. And then we also have um, some tactile catalogs in here tactile objects such as biology, vehicles, portraits, and many others. All the catalogs can be downloaded free of charge by anyone. And because I like seagulls, we'll go back to the graphic of the seagull right here, and we'll try to download it. And it's loading, okay. So here is the drawing. It has the QR code on the top left corner. We have the image description, some additional information, and bibliography. To download it, you just press right click and save image as. Okay, so now you have a tactile graphic on your computer. Paula, why is the library important? Well, the library is important because it gives children a large variety of subjects to study. And it's important not only because it has drawings, but because it has drawings with descriptions. Which makes, them, which makes them like an entire lesson. A drawing is a lesson. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, 
So now that you have the drawing in your computer, you should print it and emboss it. Now you can either use um, swell paper to do this, but if you do not have swell paper, you can use plain paper and uh, which you can print using a standard printer and then use embossing techniques, which we talk more about at this help section and learn. Here, in our learn section, we talk about embossing with the help of a um, syringe filled with wood adhesive. You have to fill it with adhesive and use it as a pen to draw thin lines, to draw contour lines. Is this uh, technique expensive, Paula? Uh, no, in fact, it's it's really um, it's not expensive. All you need is a plain piece of paper, a syringe, and wood adhesive. That's all. But we'll talk more about this in a future webinar. Now, let me okay, tell you uh, about Paula. Sorry, and if I don't know how to draw, or I don't know how to use well, the your technique well you i'm know, not you, very skilled yeah yeah you, you you don't need artistic skills to do this you know you just have to follow the lines but we'll teach you how to do it in a future webinar don't worry okay thank you because i'm not very good with my hands thank you okay <laughs> okay so if you do, if you have to emboss a lot of graphics and you do not have time to use the syringe method, we created especially for you four types of printers based on wood glue, which you can build at home. Um, you can download the manuals from our um, website. It's free of charge. Paula, which printer do you suggest that people should use? Well, all the four types of printers can be built at home, but we'll tell you more about the, the differences between them in a future webinar. Uh, Paula, can yeah. I intervene and uh, share uh, my screen? This is yes, a please. print. This is a actual the printer embossing with PVA glue with colored PVA glue. This is one beautiful thing. You can color the glue. So you have a multicolor tactile drawing. This is how it works. This is one of our printer printing the letter B. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this was like a short teaser for our uh, viewers about the next webinars that we're going to have. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Exactly. Okay. So now that you, you've embossed your graphic, uh, what you will do next is, of course, give it to the child to explore. And um, children, well, can explore the graphics from our library in three different ways. We have at first a traditional way of exploring with the help of a teacher or parent. A second way of exploring with the help of technology, with the help of QR code readers, which can be downloaded for free on any smartphone. And that QR code reader will read the information of the graphic, uh, the information about the seagull, for example. We'll read it just like a story to the child in a linear way. We'll read it just like an ebook would do. And the third way of exploring is the innovative way. It's, let's say, our way of exploring with the help of our reader, tactile images reader app which can be downloaded from the App Store free of charge. Now, what does it really do? It identifies the position of the finger on a graphic and reads what the child is touching. In this way, children can study independently at home, simultaneously at class, or even teachers can teach remotely with the help of this app. Okay, now let's pass, uh, let's go on to our next service, Image Creator. Image Creator is the reason why we are all here today, because we want to learn how to create our interactive drawings. So to create your interactive drawings, you need to create an account. You can do that by accessing services, Image Creator, go to Editor, 
or by pressing sign in from home page. So as I was saying, you have to create an account. If you don't have one, you'll press sign up, create an account, you write your name, your email. Your password. You confirm your password and then you agree with the privacy policy and press submit. It looks uh, very simple. Is that all that people should uh, uh, fill in? Yes, that's it. Name, email, and password. Perfect. Right. Thank you. Okay, so we are here in Image Creator, and here we have a first home page where you can see a video um, that presents our method. And then you can see some pieces of information about um, the components of the, of, of the Image Creator software. Uh, now let's go on. Here you have this pencil, which symbolizes the place where you can draw your, um, your graphic, where you can create the drawing. It's really is easy and anyone can use it. Um, and then you have this file, which means that here you can add um, descriptions to your graphics, descriptions that the, uh, the mobile app will read to the child. Here, on the, by pressing on this pin, you can create maps on a braille scale. And here uh, you can... Um, log in into our community, but this is a work in progress and we'll talk more about this in the future. And this down here is our email box where you can press and send us your questions or um, new feedback. And, and here you press sign out. Paula, sorry. And, yes. Paula, yes. I have a question. Why yes. uh, in the editor mode there was no files? So because you... this was a newly created account. Okay, and so user I've just created it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So user will see their their pictures. Their so it's their own library. Exactly. It's personal. Yes, it's different from every account. Thank you. Thank you. So this is it about Image Creator, the present, the general presentation. Thank you. Paula, tell us if I forget uh, the meaning of the buttons, of the uh, description of, of the buttons, where I can see them? Do I have oh, anywhere can where I can? Yeah. Yes, you can see that right here on the home page. We have uh, descriptions of all the components. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paula. Thank well, you. after a short presentation of the Tectile Images uh, website and the general uh, description of the image creator software, let's pass it on to our colleague Maria, who will show us the first module of Image Creator, the drawing software. Maria. Okay, thank you. So right now we are on our Image Creator's homepage and to enter the Drawing module, we have to go uh, here in the left side and press the second button, this pencil right here. And this one leads us directly to the drawing module. Um, okay, and right now you can see that it looks a lot like paint and we choose to create it like this, um, somehow to, to make it more familiar to users and more intuitive. But uh, it also has a lot more options than paint would have. So it looks like a simple software, but it has the, it allows you to create things that a professional software would. You can create vectorized image, images, images that can be scaled as much as you want. Uh, you can manipulate the points that you draw, and you can also draw on top of other images. And now I'm going to present uh, the sections one by one. And we're going to start with the first one, the one that's here on the left side. The first menu is the file one. Here we create, create a new document. We can save the one that we are working on. 
The next one is the edit menu. Here we can press undo, redo, copy and paste elements. And uh, the next one, the object one, allows us to choose if you want to have an object in front of another or behind it. And the view one has options related to our um, page. In the right side, we can set our page's size. So here we have the width and the height, and we can uh, modify them either by clicking le the left button on the mouse and dragging up and down, or by uh, double clicking, okay, and writing of certain size that we want our paper to have. Okay, the next one is the color. Maria, I, I have a small question. Can I modify the size of the page later on after I draw? Of course. Uh, so we can modify the size at any point in the process. We don't have to do it in the beginning. So if you, if you forget, uh, that's not a big issue. OK, thank you. So moving on to the color, you can change the, your page's color. I'm going to leave mine white. The next option is the, uh, the paper size. And we have a few predefined sizes. So we have A4 landscape and portrait. This one helps a lot when we want to print our drawings. The next one is the background module. And I'm going to show you how this works later on. This one allows us to place an image in the background and draw on top of it. OK. Uh, in the bottom part, we have our zoom. We can zoom in and zoom out. OK. And we have our, our colors, exactly like you would have them in paint. Now, the most complicated uh, part is this one in the left. Here we have um, all of our tools. The first one is the select tool. This one looks like a mouse, and it allows us to move our objects, select them, or um, kind of manipulate them. The next one is the pencil tool. This one allows us to draw freely. So if I just uh, click and move my mouse, it just draws a line. OK, we can also create shapes with this. OK, the next one is the line. Again, by clicking the left button, we just uh, draw lines. And if I press Shift, it draws a perfectly straight line. The next one is the square and the circle. So for this one, if, with these ones, it works the same. If I press shift, it creates a perfectly symmetric square. And for the circle, it's the same. Now I'm going to go back to the select tool and kind of show you what I meant earlier. So we can just simply click on the shapes that we created earlier and move them. This one is uh, empty on the inside, so I have to click on the edge to move it. OK. And we can also scale them however we want. And if right now I press Shift, uh, my shape is going to keep its proportions. It's not going to be um, um, OK, that's all. <laughs> OK, and uh, with these shapes that we've created, we can also add them, uh, add a um, certain pattern to them or change their um, the, uh, the stroke thickness and the, and, the, and the type of lines that we use for them. So if I select a line and go here in the right side, I can change the stroke width by simply clicking the left mouse button and dragging up and down or by double clicking and writing a certain uh, value. And uh, in the right, I can also change the type of line that I'm using. Maria, yes, uh, yes. I saw there are different uh, types of uh, lines. Can you tell us about more about the lines? Sure. OK, so we use different types of lines. Uh, for example, when we want to create a map or a page that contains different elements. So for a map, we would use a line like this to represent a road. And then we choose to use a line like this for something like a river, so that the person who's 
reading this tactile image would be able to kind of figure out uh, what the elements mean. And next we have the patterns. For these ones, I'm going to select the circles and we're going here in the right side. Now, uh, these patterns are already scaled at the perfect size so that when we print them and when, when, you, when we emboss them, they can be perceived um, by the breeder's hands. Uh, and this thing is also something that um, kind of makes our uh, image creator stand out because in Illustrator, you don't have this feature. Uh, the textures have a smaller size. You have to scale them manually until you kind of find the right size. Here, you already have them, so you don't have to struggle with that. And we use different patterns to kind of um, to um, uh, differentiate between elements, textures, colors. For example, if you have a flower in your drawing, you're going to use a texture for the leaves, a texture for the, the flower, maybe another texture for the grass beneath it. So this is why these ones are really important. Okay, I'm going to select all of these ones and delete them. And we're going to move on to the next module, the, the background one here on the right side. I'm going to select an image from my computer. And I chose this dog. Uh, now this one, when I'm uh, um, adding it to my page, it's already filling up the whole space. But from the right side here, I can change its size by clicking the left mouse button and dragging again, like we did before. I can also click on it and manually scale it. Uh, if I can, uh, if I choose to destroy its proportions somehow, the software doesn't allow me. So no matter what we do, the drawing is going to keep its proportions. Now here we have um, the opacity. We can change our drawing's opacity by clicking the left mouse button and dragging. This one helps us a lot when we want to draw on top of it. So I'm going to lower mine a bit. Okay. We also have settings when it comes to the rotation and the blur. To exit this menu, I'm just simply going to click outside of it. Okay. Uh, and the tool that works perfectly with, with the background uh, function is the pen tool. So here on the left side, again, we have this little pen. I'm going to click on it and zoom in a bit. Okay. Uh, we can simply scroll if you want to move out up on the page or use these little bars here. Okay. And how the pen tool works, we simply click on our page and it places the dot. And then when we click again, it places another dot. And if we um, hold our left mouse button and move it, it creates this sort of a curve. And when we click again, we can create another curve. So this helps us a lot when we want to create shapes like this one that I'm working on right now. Okay. I'm going to draw the head as well by placing dots. Okay. Now we can see that um, the shapes that I've created are filled in with the texture that I was using earlier. So we can change that. And for the ear, I'm going to choose a color because right now, um, the difference between the ear and the head is not really that visible and we need that to, to be visible. I'm also going to select the ear and re uh, right click, bring to front so that it's on top of the head. So right now we can see which one's the ear and which one's the head. Maria, sorry. Yes. If we make uh, drawings for uh, blind childs, why do we have colors? Or it's exclusively for blind childs, this uh, software? Um, no, actually our software can be used with anybody. We can create uh, these types of interactive drawings for any type of human. 
actually we can have really interesting results if we choose to combine the colors and the textures because the the black lines will be embossed and the colors will stay behind them so this way uh, this way the the drawing is a lot more interactive for any type of child yes also for visually impaired i understand thank you yes Uh, now, I mentioned earlier that these drawings that we're creating right now are vectorized drawings, and I'm going to explain a little bit what that means. I'm going to use the select tool and click on the ear and double click on it. Now we can see that um, all of our points appeared on the screen. And the fact that this one is a vectorized drawing allows us to manipulate them, actually move them however we please. So if we don't like how our drawing turned out, we can just simply move these points. And with these blue lines over here, we can click on the dot at the end and change the, the curve that we created earlier. Okay. Um... And I have a question, Maria. Okay. So I understand you can uh, edit uh, a picture. I mean, you can put a picture in the background, but uh, and start drawing. But yep. you will draw on top of the picture. I mean, it's like a regular background. You draw on top of the picture, or not? Um, I mean, yes and no. So right now we are drawing on top of the picture, but as you can see, if I zoom out, I, I can't select it. If I click on it, nothing happens. So the picture behind our drawing is somehow locked. We, we can't edit it right now, only if we go back to the background uh, module that I used earlier. So and you don't also, modify the picture? No. The background, it's uh, blocked, it's locked. Yes, okay. yes. And the same thing applies when we choose to export our drawing, the picture stays here, so we don't have to delete it. We simply export and um, I can actually test this right now to show you. I'm going to go to the file menu and uh, click on export as PNG. And as you can see, only the shapes that I created were exported. The image is not here. And uh, can you show us please, Maria, how you can uh, dim the background if I need something more, or how can I light up or make it more uh, blur? Okay, sure. So we go again here uh, on the right side, we have to click this blue button, select background. And this one allows us to edit the background again. And uh, here we have the settings that allow us to modify it, the ones that I presented earlier. And I can again edit the opacity, and again, to exit this, we simply click outside on this gray area. And I saw something uh, that it related to um, vectorial design, the align function. Can you tell us about more about the align function of the vectorial design? Yes. Um, okay. So the, because that this is not the... something in paint. In paint, you cannot do that. Yeah. In paint, you cannot move stuff and. Yes. That. Uh, that one is an important function in the professional drawing softwares and we that's why we choose to have it here as well so we can select uh, our objects so i selected the ear and the head right now and in the right side um here where it says align to objects i can click on this drop down menu and we have two options align to objects and to page align to objects means that um the objects that I selected will be kind of aligned to themselves. So if right now they are selected, I go here. Um, now here we have a few more options. We can align them to the left, to the center, right, middle, uh, top and bottom. I'm gonna choose bottom. So you can see right now that uh, both of them are aligned to their own bottom. If I change this and I go to align to page and I click on the same button, they both aligned to the bottom of the page. And that's kind of what that uh, function does. Now, 
um, I'm going to move on to, the, to our library and I want to create a new page. I'm going to do that by going here to the file menu and by pressing new document. Right now it's asking me if I want to delete everything that I have right now on the page and I'm going to click OK. The library is here on the left side under this star. Here we have a few drawings that we created before uh, and these ones are they they all have a predefined size and I'm going to show you what that means. So I'm going to go to the animal section, place the rabbit here. As you can see right now, it's filling up the whole page. I'm going to choose a human and the rabbit changed its size according to the human. So whenever we add a new object, the ones that are already on the page are going to change their size according to the object, the new object size. I will also add a tree. And the other ones are now smaller. Maria, can I deform the objects that are already created here? No, uh, you cannot do that. So our library contains a fixed proportional clip art. These ones are drawings that have a certain size already defined and they cannot be modified. Thank you, Maria. And please tell me more if I want to add a new object, for instance, like a fox or any other new object, uh, what can I do as a user of Image Creator? Okay, uh, you can simply email us, let us know what image you want us to add to the library and what size you want that image to be. And you can simply email us by clicking on this blue button right here, down on the left side, or by emailing us at supportarontectileimages.org. Thank you. Um, now the last function that our drawing module has is the text one. So here on the left side, we can press this little T here. We use it by clicking on our page and we can write anything that we want. So I'm gonna write tree. With the select tool, we can move it. We can copy and paste it. And on the right side, we can change its size and the font used. And an important feature that we have is that we can, uh, you can directly write in Braille in our um, software. And the font size is, uh, the font is at the, at the perfect size to be read. Now I'm going to move on to the drawing that I was working on earlier, a finished version. I moved it lower a little bit so that we can have space for our QR. And to export it, we simply go to our file menu and export it as PNG. And now we can move on to creating our interactive image. Thank you, Maria. You're done. Do you want to add something? Yes, I want to ask Maria if there's any other way to make space on the drawing board. Yes, there is. I'm going to go back to the page that I was working on earlier. On the right side, here we have our max height. Right now it's set at 90%. If I set it at the lower size, uh, all the elements in the page are kind of minimized. And this way we can have more space on our page without having to scale all the objects individually. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Well, until now, we went through the first module, the drawing software, and now it's time for our colleague Dan to present us the second module, the maps. Dan, you have the word. Thank you, Gabi. So we're back in the platform and uh, here on the bottom, you see a logo, a map logo, and we arrive at the our partners page Mappy. Mappy is a software that uh, automatically makes uh, maps, tactile maps, at the level of Braille character. So the uh, names of the streets of the region are written in Braille. And for that to happen, 
this uh, mapi has three um three level of zoom and uh, you can find them here and uh, uh gabi to make the demonstration yes, can you tell me where do you live because this yes. is a global map this is a uh, it's like google maps but it has a feature a tactile feature so let's um, make an address or something like that okay so let's put uh, mageru number 12. Uh, Mm, Magyaru village? <laughs> no, it's Boulevard, I think. Yes, Boulevard Magyaru. Yes, I think this is. So this is the street, this is the Boulevard. It's in uh, somewhere in Bucharest. And this is a th the thing. This is the thing that Mappy has. It prints A4 pages, and you have to stick it to obtain a large map. And this is how it works. You select the A4 pages, and then you print it and select it. This is not the right example. I just wanted to show you how the page works. But let's use the small one here it's uh, difficult to show that's why I, I selected that this is the small uh, size mappy meaning that you can see this is the level of the city so these are the neighborhood and then you go deeper and you have the level of streets and then here are the names of the this is the neighborhood and when you go deeper to the level of house you have a beautiful street and this is where gabi lives in this block <laughs> and uh, look the streets are with uh, braille with the acronym in braille the buildings are full are uh, full object if you emboss it in swell paper you will uh, see how um, this will be very beautiful and also uh, the streets are with the thin red line and the empty spaces the parks are with dots and to actually print this paper this uh, map of the neighborhood you select the zones you want to print you see you see them here you select here the additional information, legends, street identification, and sheet identification, meaning that you know how to print it. So this is page number one, two, three, four. And then you download and you go to your uh, emboss uh, system, your swell paper, or you can emboss it with glue, and you will have a map uh, automatically made in two or three minutes of your surrounding. Jan, please tell me, do you have any example of a map or maps that you printed from this module? Yes, I have one. It's uh, uh, Chishmiju Park here in Bucharest. And it looks like this. Uh, we printed the um, A4s you see on the upper left uh, it's an a4 that we made it and here the multiple pages are mappies printed then we stick it on the back we uh, use some tape and this is how the mappy results this is how a mappy uh, embossed map at scale with braille um, names on the street looks like it's a map that you can explore with both hands and it looks very good and it's a, a scientific map, how to say. I mean, it's the right proportion of your surroundings so you can have better um, orientation. This is Mapi, Gabi. Thank you. Thank, Thank you me. very much, uh, Dan. 
So we went through the first uh, two modules of Image Creator, the drawing software and the maps module. In these two modules, we draw the tactile graphics. Now let's see how we can make this content uh, to be uh, interactive. For this, let's first watch a short video that presents the transition from a plain drawing to an interactive one and see how it becomes a self-describing content. Bottom corner. Comet station Calia Victoria. This is the left this wing. is the left wing of the fly. Fly. The title in Great Britain and Romania. This is the side of the Trolebus's body. Image loaded to fly. Let's see how we can create this uh, interactivity of the drawing. Then, please show us how we can bring a piece of paper to life, how we can make it interactive. You have the word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. Um, so, in the platform, we go here on the icon that represents some files. Yes, and our page, our module for Image Creator will open. And this model, this page, it's uh, divided into section. The upper one, it's uh, some info. It's our recommendation. It's uh, how you should uh, use the page. Every page has a different section of info. And here are the the catalogs, the your like li your library. Um, hope you have to use the search bar and uh, this is our test page and you see here the ids the different columns with names this is a, an interesting column because it's a category column here we have uh, two types of drawings uh, swell paper and pva glue there are different techniques and uh, they require different uh, type of drawings meaning that in PVA glue, you cannot have full color, full, full, full shapes, because it will make a pot or something like that will deform the paper. So it, in in swell paper in uh, PVA glue, sorry, in PVA glue you need to have a thin line, not uh, too many spaces filled with color. This is the creator column, and this is another uh, interesting column is the areas, the active areas on the drawing. This has six areas, four, one, depending on the drawing. And of course, another column with the status of the drawing because you may be editing and it's pending or it's final. And here on the right, uh, it's the action, printing, downloading, translating, editing, further editing and deleting the 
page. We will talk this about later. Now let's add a new picture here uh, on the upper side. Please make sure that you read and the files are PNG and is no bigger than uh, two megabytes. Then we go back and test dog. We select the paper or the PVA glue. And we'll go here and upload the files that Maria draw. I will make a test. So our platform works only with PNG, but please uh, let's see if we open any JPEG. So the image will load, but when we try to go to the next tab, it will give us an error. So we'll have to upload a correct PNG files. And it will work. And now we're on the module that represents one of our innovation. This is where you put the QR code, the link, the physical link between digital and the virtual worlds, you put it on the drawing. So the QR code is very important to be a PNG and it should have 200 per 200 pixels dimension. And the easiest way is to obtain it through this website. This is a free uh, website. You can find it on the Google, it's the QR code generator. It's, uh, they, it's a free software and we use it because it makes static QR code and uh, it's very easy to use it. I will come back to this later. Uh, the thing is, the important thing is that this is the link between the information you add to the child, the information to add to the explorer, you as a teacher or you as a parent or you as a creator. So this is the link where he can find further information. He can study images, he can study tactile graphics, he can study even objects with the information you give him for his level of knowledge, for his their personalized description. And just to show you how you can create that, um, and uh, it's very important to know, uh, we use, we link our drawing to our library. Let's say we have a dog. So this is tactile images, science, biology, animal, and this is the place where we hold our information. But this is for our drawings. If you want your drawing, it's easy to put uh, the, the file on your website and just get the link, the hyperlink here. If you don't have a website, doesn't matter. You just have to have a place where to keep the information. So that's why we also use, you know, Google Drive. So let's take an example. So I don't have a website, but I need to uh, give information, to give extra information to the child that he can read. And I will do that. Uh, I will go just for this uh, example to Wikipedia, just to have something to copy. And I'll go to my Google box and I will, I don't know, say about history. So this is the place where you have the information. This is the place where you have the lessons. And if the child has an Android phone, she uh, or he could use a uh, QR code reader app, or if he has an iPhone, he will use the um, uh, photo app and they will direct to this page, which the voiceover, the Google Talkback will translate into voice. But this is a linear experience, a linear experience like radio. What I'm going to show you now, it's how to make it non-linear experience, how we can make uh, images self-describe under their finger. So we take the link. Yes, let's make this. Let's take the Google Doc links and put it here in the QR code generator. And we will obtain a QR code, yes. We will save it as PNG, past dog, and we'll be here. And we'll go to the Tactile Images platform and upload it. 
So this is your QR code. This is your link. This is very important because it's your private drawing. Yes? It links to your website or to your document. So we'll hit next. We'll wait a little bit so the image is processed. And now the image is loaded. And we'll start selecting zones. You will see the first zone, it's uh, the QR code because for us it's uh, very important. It's uh, like a button with extra information. But let's start selecting zones. It's simple as drag and drop. We try to make it as simple as possible. And as you can see, the shapes are um, not definite. They're deformable. And also, if you make some mistake, you can erase it from here, from the recycle. So now we're finished with the selecting the zones. We'll go here and hit Next. And now we're in the page where we should add text. Every section, you see, has a line. And when it's filled with text, it'll, it'll, this line will disappear. But let's start with uh, the QR code. This is what we use for the history, for the health, for the place where you have information that it's contextual. The information is uh, unlimited. So there's no uh, character space, character limit. That means they can you can put here as much text as you want to create your context. I put some Wikipedia. But the thing is that this will transform into voice and it will speak 10 minutes or I don't know, doesn't matter. How long do you want? Here it's important to put the text you want. Here is the nose. I will just uh, write something short. That is the tail. I write it bad. That is the tail. These are the front legs. And I will stop uh, writing it, but you'll see. These, are, these have text. This doesn't have text, these zones. Of course, you have to fill everything. But I just want to show you that that's all the process to make a paper that could self-describe with the help of Tactile Images Reader app and become interactive. Now you just have to print. This is how the page looks like. You see the QR code in the upper left. And uh, that's all. You go to the Swell paper or you uh, print it uh, via an inkjet and you um uh, go on top of it with the PVA glue as Paula mentioned it earlier. This is the download button and this is another interesting thing that I want to show you it's the translate button. Because here you could translate the information in eight languages. That's very important because the effort it's replicated and um if you if you're a uh, language teacher you can have the, the same object, the same description in several languages. This language is uh, delivered by the phone depending on the default language you selected. So if you are a Spanish-speaking uh, user, you have the default language Spanish, and then the app will read in uh, Spanish. OK, so now we just have to translate. And of course, fill in all the blanks and save. And this is how a paper, a piece of paper can speak in Spanish or in German or in Italian or in English or in how many languages do you want? Now we have uh, eight, but this is not the limit. We can translate, we can, we can improve the app working into your language. And of course, 
Uh, Dan, uh, I uh, have a small question. Can you show us uh, how I can modify the selected areas or how I can re redefine uh, the, the text or I can put add new text? Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if you made a mistake or if you find something, yes, you have here a button. It's an edit image. And uh, if you dog number two, you can edit the text. The, the title if you want you can also go and rearrange the the zones the active zones the zone that have a video description and uh, of course after you finish this you will go and add text here is no text but it is now this is live this is in cloud you can put everything and anytime you want you can change it you can improve it you can even change the whole uh if you if you have a child that evolves and you have to repeat the lesson you can come and evolve with him and teach him other things on the same drawing so this is how you, uh, you of course you finish Gabi, this is how you can re-edit the drawing. This is how versatile it is, how flexible it is. So you have a drawing, you can add and modify and create and update your information and do whatever you want to help you communicate and uh, enrich the child uh, culture. Thank you very much, Dan. Can you show us uh, now uh, uh, what the app does more exactly? How does the graphic become interactive? Yes, so I'll have a video uh, with our secret sauce because uh, it's important to understand how the platform works, how the system works, and how we can uh, identify the position of the finger on the drawings. As you can see, there is a red dot, the red line that follows the finger. This is what we do. We transform the index finger into a mouse pointer. And when you sit for uh, three seconds on a zone, then the phone will uh, automatically uh, play the, this, the audio description that you wrote there. So this is human computer interaction. We transform the paper into a clickable one, a fixed object into a clickable one. If you stay three seconds, then the phone will uh, play the audio description that it's written on that area. This is uh, what we do. Thank you, Dan. So I understand the uh, procedure and how it works, but can you show us a specific example, please? Yeah, sure. I have two more videos with uh, papers and objects. So this is a uh, physical object, it's a table, a tactile table made in a school. So this is a physical table with buttons and speakers and electricity and stuff like that. It's a map, tactile map in a school. And it costs a lot of money just to be interactive. So the child will know where they are. So they push the button. But we come over it and add a layer of information, that green zones. And now any child with any iPhone could come to this uh, physical table and see where they are and what are the, um, the rooms on the table. Very important to see in this picture is that you don't have to see the whole picture. Very important to see in this video is that the camera, the smartphone, doesn't have to see all the pictures. This is augmented reality. You can put a layer of information on top of an existing object and uh, the app will recognize part of the object. 
this is very important because blind people don't use the screen, you know, the iPhone screen. So they just have to point the phone in that direction. This is the tactile map. And uh, the next, I want to show you uh, a physical catalog. A physical catalog. And that was the physical map. And the next one, it's a physical catalog. It's a printed book that we make. And you can see here the finger, the app, it's tracing the index and uh, it's tracing real time live. It's very responsive. And uh, of course, you don't have to see the whole page. So you don't have to see the QR code, but it's important to stay three seconds in a place if you want to hear the description. The app will make a beep when it enters an active zone. And if you stay there for one, two, three, it will start this hard, the behind legs, and et cetera. All the description that it is underneath these green areas. These green areas are just for me to show you. There's not the, the blind don't use it. It's not, uh, they don't use it. And in the future version of the app, we will have a button uh, on off display, you know, because it's not relevant and it consumes battery. And as you can see, it's important that camera recognize the objects and you can move the phone. This is what we do with the tactile images reader app. We transform inanimate objects into a live one. We make a paper speak or something like that. We give extra information with the help of uh, interactive augmented reality. We have extra information to objects that are uh, created and put it in our library that had zone uh, descriptive and that had text on it. This is how uh, you make an ordinary piece of paper interactive. Thank you very, very much, Dan. And uh, thank you to the, all the presenters that uh, hold the presentation today. This was the webinar about the image creator software where you can create drawings, but also make tactile graphics interactive. Now that we are at the end, I will present to you our next webinars. This webinar, Image Creator, is the first from a series of three webinars. We will soon create a, a webinar about manual embossing techniques, where we will show you the cheapest ways to turn a drawing into a tactile drawing. The third webinar will be about the tactile printer based on wood glue, and we will present the innovation created along with the Polytechnic University of Bucharest for tactile printers that use a wood glue printing technique. This being said, thank you very much for watching. Also, we want to thank uh, the Orange Foundation for the support and we invite you to follow us on Twitter and also make an image creator account. Also, if you like our cause, we please ask you to support our activity through a donation on our website, www.tectileimages.org. If you have questions or uh, any suggestions about this presentation, we invite you to write to us at contact at or call us at the number shown on the screen. Thank you for watching and we look and we look forward to see you at our next webinars. Stay safe and be healthy. See you soon. Bye. Yes, our great accent was good. Yeah, yeah it worked. <laughs> Reclamațiile să ne le trimită pe mail în... And broadcast, they dau and broadcast.
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Until now, we went through the first module, the drawing software, and now it's time for our, our colleague Dan to present us the second module, the map.